Here's a video I've been dying to make for a while. If you follow the channel or if you've been to my website, breadtax.com, you know that just this last winter I took an entire group, actually two groups, to Nepal. I also scattered out a trip through Africa, which Paul and I are leaving for here in May and June to take riders with us to go explore that continent. The reason I wanted to make this video is I've spent 27 years as a professional instructor. It's what my education's in, it's what I've made my life doing. And there were some takeaways from that trip that were really surprising to me. Anytime I'm coaching riders I'm, or teaching riders, I'm constantly evaluating the effectiveness of what I teach and how I teach. I study educational models, I take classes, I, I'm very good at being critical, I videotape my own teaching or, or video my own teaching so I can see how I, I do that. But also I look at are the skills that I teach the most effective way to do something. When I travel, I want to ensure that what I'm teaching you is exactly what I'm doing. And a great example is one of the videos I made when I was in Africa in May, scouting for this, this upcoming tour, is I did a video on sand. And I shot that video. The very first thing I did was I shot the language for the video. Here's how you ride through sand. When I shot the B-roll, it occurred to me as I looked at it that I wasn't doing exactly what I was saying. Close, but not exact. I had to reshoot the audio on that. And it wasn't because I was riding through the sand wrong. It's just that I had fallen into phrases or concepts that were more traditional, but didn't actually apply. This is also why you'll see an evolution in some of my more current videos where they're situational, where I describe very specifically what's happening, what's going on, what are the criteria I'm working around, and how to modify technique based on that. But all that comes back to what I learned from those riders when I was in Nepal. Because it's an international expedition that I take people to, and because this, this upcoming trip for Africa includes people that are from all over the world, not just from North America, there's a lot of people who do not have access to riding off-road. They hardly have any unpaved roads to play on. They might take a class, but there's no place to get those skills perfected. That means when they show up with me, they show up green. Now, in, in Africa, it's great because I have a place to, I've rented a location to do a day of training before we get started. But in Nepal, that just wasn't an option. So I end up with a lot of people who are, spiritually, they're just driven for this adventure. But they don't necessarily have any way to prepare significantly. These riders returned with greater confidence and in many ways, greater practical skills than people I've spent time training with or even taken on domestic training tours. And certainly a lot more than a, most rider I've seen that have come either self-taught or from other, uh, other venues of education. And it really made me have to step back and go, why did these riders who, who had almost no formal education with me even while we rode, we just fixed things as we went, why did their confidence spike so high? How is it that they were able to overcome things that many riders here in North America where I train primarily spend years trying to overcome? These are some of those takeaways. One, it was real. It wasn't imaginary. And when I do training tours here, that certainly helps. I take people, we're not just, uh, here I'm at, at Pemeril Farms, or uh, if I'm down in Georgia at Iron Mountain, or if I'm, if I'm on the ranch over in Oregon State, uh, those are all great locations, and certainly there's hills and everything else, but they're not real. You get to step back and watch. You can skip it if you don't wanna do it. Say, eh, I'm just, I'm too tired, I'm gonna sit back and watch for a while. When we were traveling, that wasn't an option. In fact, it wasn't even necessarily an option to throw it in the truck. We had to do what we had to do. As an example, in, in Nepal, we had some very long suspended bridges. Since we haven't, most of us, haven't grown up in that environment, it's, um, it's a little pucker factor <laughs> when you get out there and you're like, there's nothing below me. But yet every single rider 
made it across those bridges because it wasn't a choice. There was no road to go around. You couldn't go through the river and follow the support vehicles. It was too deep. The roads were continuously what we would consider challenging. There was rock and there was mud and it was slick and there was no break. There was no relief. It wasn't like we did just a small section, like when we practice here and we play here. There were these long, nonstop, day after day after day, and it normalized those feelings, that feedback from the motorcycle. Not only that, but when you're riding through a section of a road or you're riding up and it's sliding all over and you're like, man, I am so good. I am an awesome adventure rider. And then some grandma comes riding past you on a scooter carrying a goat. Pretty soon it puts everything in check and everything in reality. And those reality checks, that environment allowed these riders to overcome the number one, the most significant thing that keeps you from becoming the rider that you fantasize about, that you dream about, that you all want to be. And that is our minds. That's what messes us up. More than anything else, it's our mind. We get fearful of things, we hesitate things, we doubt. And if we can get beyond that, all of a sudden, so much becomes a possibility. And nothing more makes that more obvious and more applicable, more achievable than doing international travel. or doing long travels in places where there aren't options, where I can't just say, hey, I'm doing a, a backcountry discovery route. Uh, today it's pretty slimy, it's cold, I'm not feeling it, I'm just going to jump on the highway. The highway's not an option. That's, that's part of the reason everybody was successful. So that, that repetition, that reality that happened. Also, I think there was a lot to do with the camaraderie. We're riding with other riders uh, of various levels and they support and they struggle and to see those other riders and to be able to recognize that they have the same sort of challenges that you have and that you all work together through as a team definitely was another factor I think that added in to this stellar and abnormal success rate of riders. The next thing I, I guess I have to ask is as a, as a trainer, as a guy who makes his living teaching riders, what can I take away from this and how do I, uh, how do I help riders? And one is, well, as long as possible, I'm going to take riders to places just like that. So I, again, in May and June, if you want to go, I, I have some spots. Uh, if, as long as people want to go with me, as long as people are learning, then I'm game to, to find different places around the world to take riders with me. But at home, definitely those opportunities that will challenge you, that will normalize things, uh, teamwork, you know, working with, as a group. I, I don't do a lot of private training because I'm not a huge fan. I think riders learn more from each other and from that experience and watching others struggle and succeed than they do from just me standing there and showing them. Un unfortunately, one of the things everybody assumes is that I have some great talent as a rider. I really don't. Mostly, I'm just really lazy. Now, I don't fall down because I don't want to pick up the bike. I, I don't go really fast up the, the hill and spin my tire out because that means I have to change my tires more and it's harder to go up the hill. Basically, that's what I train riders to do. Ride lazy. Ride, as I put it, nature's way. The path of least resistance. And riding with others, training with others in a group setting helps that. If you have the opportunity to travel with others, I think it will expand it even further. And nothing will drive home and, and go beyond those, those fear challenges as getting across an international border. If you ever have the chance, if you ever are invited, if you, I, I just, I can't express how much it will make a difference, not only to your riding, but also to your soul, to your person, and make you appreciate everything that you have in life now. I know this video was primarily a rant, a sharing of something that I discovered that I found extremely exciting when I was traveling with others, but I hope there's something that you took away from it, uh, whether it's just something to strive for, something to feel, something to understand, but I want to thank you for subscribing, for watching, 
And if you really like these, uh, jump on Patreon. Please help keep the channel alive. Remember, when I say smile with a ride with a smile or smile while you ride because attitude matters, it truly does because it's all about the mind.